So when you show up at Nobby's, you check in here and you get your fishing license. You've already ordered your bait, whether it be minnows, leeches, or worms. Um, and then we look after you from there on in. Most people go upstairs, have breakfast while we load the plane, get it organized. And you're usually gone between five and six in the morning. When you land at the lodge, there's people there to take all your luggage into the cabins and get set up. So most groups would be fishing by eight o'clock in the morning on the first day in. There's fish cleaning shacks. They'll clean the fish for you if that's what you want. If you don't want that, you can clean your own fish. Each cabin is a full kitchenette with showers, toilets, indoor toilets, and everything else in there. We also have a main kitchen if the bigger groups want to cook, not in the cabins, but somewhere else they can cook uh, in that place and it's set up to take big groups. For a lot of people, a dream trip is a fly-in fishing adventure. It's one of the last great places on earth if you like to catch giant pike. Roads less traveled, less civilization, and a lot of great fishing. We're going to showcase one of these great opportunities, one of the last great places to catch big Whoa. pike and walleyes on today's show. Nice fish. Yeah. That's a nice pike there, Mort. That's a beauty there. Don't these fish just have beautiful color? And, you know, part of the mystique of this area is just all the exploring. Every bend, every island is a new adventure. I'll let this fish back in the water. There you go, girl. There. And there's just so many different neat options, not just for pike, but we'll touch on the patterns that you can find walleyes on. Lake trout are typically in deep water where you can either troll or jig for them, but typically too, on these flying camps, you're not allowed to pack a lot of gear. A lot of times 100 to 125 pounds a person is all you get, so you have to travel light, pick just a few key lures, a couple rods, your sleeping bag and a pillow and your food, and that's about all you get to bring. But that's part of the fun of it. You don't have all the fancy equipment, but really in places like that, you don't really need it. Jason Mitchell Elite Series Rods brings you the daily log entry. Jaws on that fish. There. That's a that's a dandy there. Boy, that fish was fun. That fish just came right up out of the cabbage just like it should and just ate it as a big boil behind that lure the first time he hit it and got her the second time. We'll get this fish back in the water. There. Cool. Nice fish. I'll show you what we're doing here. This is fun fishing. I just love these big pike. But these Canadian Shield Lakes, there's a lot of deep water. There's a lot of different types of structure, but by and large, you can't go wrong fishing the cabbage. And cabbage will be in different varying stages as far as where it is in the water column and how close it is to the surface. But when you get real thick cabbage, you can't go wrong just tossing a big spinner bait like this. If the cabbage is, you know, maybe foot, two feet, three feet underwater, another bait I like to throw a lot that there is a, that's a semel fatso, but look how many fish that's caught. This here, you can really pop it, work it down about a foot, two feet underneath the water, but use big baits, identify key areas that have cabbage, you know, the bigger the weed beds, the better, and just fish them. And I tell you what, when you get big pike, it's a whole different animal compared to like a hammer handle and the excitement. I mean, these fish are fun and they're special. There's not many places anymore where you can target big pike on purpose. The walleye fishing is just incredible on these lakes, no exaggeration, 100 fish days are common per boat. 
just about every reef, every island, every incoming river, every point seemed to hold fish, with most of the fish between 10 to 20 feet of water. There's a fish. Oh yeah, there's a beauty. There's a beauty. Beautiful country, beautiful colored fish. There's a, it's a typical walleye up here, but these lakes are just full of fish just like that. And I don't know, we've seen, we've seen some fish. I think the biggest fish we've seen up here is 23 inches. There's obviously some fish bigger than that, but what's amazing about this, just the beautiful scenery and just the numbers of fish. This is just a great destination if you enjoy walleye fishing. Yeah, Canadian gold, huh? Perfect, perfect eating size. You know, Mar, you've been coming up to Canada for over 40 years on these flying adventures. What are some must-have things that you need to bring in order to catch, you know, in order to ensure that you can catch some fish and you've got the right equipment? You've got to travel light, but what are the necessities that you can't leave home without? I think one of the most important things is a portable depth finder. A GPS is important. A lot of these lakes are pretty good size, a lot of islands, a lot of bays. You don't want to get lost. And obviously a uh, map is, a, is important as well, show you where the bays are, where the creeks come in, and that's uh, important if you're looking for uh, pike and uh, walleyes as well. People did before those pieces of equipment existed, but now that they're available, I couldn't imagine trying to fish these lakes without a depth finder, for example. Well, it's, I mean, it's, you want to know how deep the water is below the boat, you want to know where the rock reefs are, obviously. And, uh, they've got some really good uh, units out there. All you need is uh, some D-cell batteries and, and uh, suction cup to uh, put that fish. transducer in the back of the boat and you're, and you're ready to go. There. Now you look at this fish here. Most of these fish have teeth marks on them. And Nobbies, they supply bait on their fly-ins, but I tell you what, whenever you're up here in the middle of nowhere, definitely want to have some soft plastics along because you'll never run out of bait that way. That's just an impulse paddle tail, but stock up on some impulse whenever you come up into Canada because long after you run out of bait, you'll realize that it catches fish just as good as live bait. Mort, you know, this water's just got that coffee color that's typical of a lot of these Canadian shield lakes, but there's, there's different types of lakes and you often try to find out you know, what type of lake you're fishing before you fly, just so you can better prepare. Why don't you discuss some of the things that you've seen fishing in Canada? Well, one of the things, if a uh, lake has lake trout in it, it's gonna have a lot deeper water, probably 100, 120 feet of water. Mm -hmm. Water will be typically a lot clearer than uh, it will be in a, uh, you know, one of these shallower lakes that doesn't have lake trout in it. If it does have lake trout, obviously you wanna bring some different lures uh, that lake trout will, will hit depending on the time of the year. If it's uh, you know, a shallow lake, it's going to be stained water, and the walleyes and northern should be a lot shallower. Uh, and that's nice to know as well. So you want to know what kind of fish are in the lake, and you want to be prepared uh, depending on what's, what fish you're after, really. This is fun stuff. Gorgeous. Wow, I tell you what, I can't recommend this place enough if you're just looking for an adventure in Ontario where you want to experience a fly and fishing camp that has very deluxe accommodations. You're going to be comfortable up here. These are the nice, some of the nicest cabins I've ever seen in Canada, especially for a fly-in. Great facilities, really nice accommodations, especially for a fly-in camp on remote lakes. Blood on my hands, that's my blood. You're going to get your hands cut up when you fish with knobbies.